It's time to get this party started. Please welcome to the stage a man who's overcome height and religious handicaps. He was told he'd never make it to the St. James Hall tonight. Please welcome to the stage the creator and host for Rise of the Comics, help build his waning confidence, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Scotty Aceman! Casting live in Technicolor and around 27 neighborhoods in Metro Vancouver. Welcome to Rise of the Comics Live! I'm your host for the evening, Scotty Aceman. No cheers. We've got a great show for you tonight. The comics are just back here in the green room. They can hear you. Go ahead and let them know how excited you are for the show. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm so glad that you guys are all here to witness the show, to witness what's happening. It's, uh, it's not enough to be a casual observer anymore. No, you've got to witness. You have to witness what's happening. You know, when, uh, when you're witnessing something, you know, if I could just get serious for a minute, this, uh, this goes back to our heritage, my heritage, my upbringing, when my father washed my mouth out with soap, I was seven, no witnesses, no witnesses. Well, growing up, you guys, I, a lot of you know me, when I grew up, I knew things were going to be a little bit difficult. It all happened when I was about 13 years old, and my mother, she teamed up with a local rabbi and deemed I would not be eligible for a Saturday morning bar mitzvah. Yeah, yeah, apparently because of my shortcomings and, and learning disabilities. And for those of you who don't know what a bar mitzvah is, it's when a 13-year-old Jewish boy becomes a man and feels compelled to unleash his puberty-stricken voice for the entire community to hear. Absolutely ridiculous. I can tell you one thing for sure, I was not a man. I definitely was not a man. No, because at 13, I was busy with a paper route and selling firecrackers to rich kids. That's what I was doing. So. So some people thought that my shortcomings may have been related to genetics. Well, I still maintain it's my mother's fault for not childproofing the house. Yeah, you see, I had a strange fixation on Windex. Yeah, yeah. When you're having trouble reading and you're looking for the blue Kool-Aid, shit happens. So it... It was deemed I would not be eligible for the typical Saturday morning bar mitzvah. No, I would have the alternative, very shitty Thursday morning bar mitzvah. <laughs> yeah, didn't exactly have the same cachet that the Saturday morning bar had with all the heavy hitters. Yeah, and a Saturday morning bar kid could go from getting cool high-end gifts like uh, electronics, like a, a Sony Walkman with cassettes. To me, we're on my Thursday morning bar mitzvah, I received travel magazines. <laughs> Which was kind of cool, actually, because uh, we didn't have the internet back then, so I was able to flip through these magazines, and I would get to see all the places I would never be able to afford to travel to. So that was kind of cool, and coincidentally, I would also receive personalized photo albums. Not very glamorous, and I did not own a camera, so, so I eventually would cut out photos from my travel magazines and put them in my personalized photo albums. 
Uh, you know, I just heard that for the first time out loud, and it actually sounded quite pathetic, but my childhood was not nearly that bad, guys. Don't, uh, don't come down on me too hard. It wasn't that bad. I, uh, I, didn't, I wasn't very bright. I didn't exactly have control over the gift registry. But I kind of feel like cash would have been a good gift. Cash would have been good. I feel like maybe my life may have turned out better. I don't know. And then I, you know, I got through all that and wound up having a successful career in, in the wireless phone business, selling cellular phones. A lot of you guys know about that. Yeah, so it would be no surprise after a 25-year career doing cell phones that I would wind up in the entertainment business doing stand-up comedy, doing host and rise of the comics. How about that, huh? I mean, come on, give it up, yeah. When you got two degrees and nothing to fall back on, it's the perfect midlife crisis. Yeah. Two degrees, nothing to fall back on, you got nothing to lose. Some people have come up to me and said, Scott, that's amazing. You know, you're chasing your dreams, you're, you're living out your fantasies, you're doing what you want, but, but what about dignity and respect? So I tell them the same thing every time. Dignity and respect went out the window the minute I had a Thursday morning bar mitzvah. <laughs> All bets were off. I had low expectations of myself. And eventually, I would get mixed up with some badass kids. And they'd make me do evil things. Drugs, theft, alcohol, and fighting. Being Jewish, I didn't fight. I just arranged the matchups. And I have another stream of unbelievable energy from someone that, that gave me the, the ability to get up here on stage and do all this and just, uh, you know, the good vibes. Somebody I dearly loved. Yeah, my grandmother. Yeah. Yeah, that's worth wooing. Yeah, absolutely. But it, it wasn't because of her age-old wisdom stories about life and trials, tribulations. No. No, my grandmother, she pushed people around and smoked a pack a day of Benson and Hedges and lived to be 96. Yeah, 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 f***ing good for her. I mean, seriously, if we could all do that. And when she was on a bender, it was two packs a day. And that bender lasted from 1991 to 2007. My grandmother never drove. So somebody had to go pick up her cartons of cigarettes. Lucky for her, I come from a family of enablers. <laughs> Only the enablers were not her parents. It was me and my cousins. Yeah, we were just teenagers. Anybody back in the day could get smokes. You didn't have to be a certain age or anything like that. My grandmother would give me 50 bucks. My grandmother used me as a drug mule. Yeah, yeah, it was my first experience with drugs and smuggling. I had to get the nicotine back to her before she finished her bowl of maple walnut ice cream. Yeah, so she could commence with chain smoking. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And if I didn't get it back to her in time, she'd be all pissy. Yeah, so eventually I got on the program and that worked out well and my grandmother would let me keep the change. Yeah. So, for $3.50, I kind of killed my grandmother. <laughs> it's a little bit, she lived to be 96 people, give it up. Stop it. I've got a huge passion for family. Me and my, my peeps, we got a huge passion for family. Yeah. That's not it, people. Sorry, it's it's passion for family dinners. That's what it is, family dinners. We can all relate to that. Damn it, no, it's not that. It's just the dinners. It's not the family part. We loved our dinners. We, uh, we're not really big into booze, but uh, we enjoyed eating. Are you, maybe some of you are familiar with this. The Zagat Restaurant Rating Guide. 
Some of you are familiar with that? Yeah? Okay. Of course, it wasn't resounding, but it's an of course, okay. So, yeah, developed by a couple in New York, the Zagats, over 50 years ago. Somehow they've been to every restaurant in North America, and they've rated things from ambiance, food quality, all that stuff. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Here's the deal. My family's a little bit obnoxious and a lot hysterical. They kind of have their own Zagat restaurant rating service, and it goes something like this. Did we get a good table? Within a three block radius, was there any free parking? And is there something on the menu we can order? We're halfway through eating, we can send back on a full legitimate complaint, thus avoiding full payments. And bonus points if they throw in a free dessert. Yeah. That's how you get a Zagat rating service in my family. And oh yeah, if they want us coming back, the service better be good. <laughs> they don't want us coming back. No. I could, I could just see my mom in the crowd going, Oh, Scott, we, we've never been kicked out of a restaurant before. Oh, He's talking about the other side of the family. <laughs> Guys, we got a great show for you tonight. I want to thank the, uh, all the corporate sponsors. I want to thank the volunteers. Half of the volunteers are from the comedy community. Give it up for the comedy community comics. Yeah. Hi, Yumi. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. You're so young and original, but how would you describe yourself in three words? Three words. So I am Japanese, so I am gentle, I'm accurate, and used to the smell of raw fish. Our first performer, she hails from Japan. She's been here for 10 years. She's a brilliant actress and a great comic. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show, Yumi Nagashima! Hey, hey, hey. Hi, lovely people in Vancouver. How's it going tonight? Are you guys having fun? Good. Little bit introduction about myself. My name is Yumi, like you and me. And last night, I had a dream of getting spanked by Mel Gibson. <laughs> nice to meet you. And two nights ago, I had a nightmare of getting adopted by Woody Allen. <laughs> nice to meet you. I am originally from Japan, but I have been living in Vancouver for 10 years now. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Vancouver is a beautiful city. I love Vancouver. But when I walk streets in Vancouver, Lots of creepy, Ooh, <laughs> sorry, creepy white men <laughs> come and ask me, Konnichiwa. Do you want to go for sushi sometime? I think it's slightly racist. <laughs> like 75% racist. <laughs> well, let me explain. For example, when I see an attractive, let's say, a Mexican guy, would I go and say, hola, do you want me to help you pay for the wall? <laughs> or when I see an attractive, let's say, an Australian guy, would I go and say, hey, do you want to do some cocaine in Whistler? <laughs> I wouldn't say that because it's racist. 
So maybe next time when I see a creepy white man comes to me, I would say, hey, you creepy white man <laughs> with awkward social skills, with borderline autism, with halitosis and funky body smell. <laughs> maybe you want to go to Japan <laughs> and try to teach English there. Because that's what creepy white men do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Vancouver is so politically correct. Sometimes when I do this joke, people get offended on behalf of creepy white men. <laughs> and if I offended you tonight, I am so sorry. And you're right. Hashtag creepy white lives matter. <laughs> I'm gonna leave you on this. There was one time my boyfriend asked me, hey Yumi, can you say something in Japanese during sex? It really turns me on. Yeah, I guess he was one of those creepy white men. <laughs> So I said, okay, I'll try my best. And I said, ah, anata to issho ni iru no wa iminken no tame na no yo. And he was like, whoa, that was pretty sexy. <laughs> what did you say? And I was like, oh. <laughs> well, it means, um, I'm with you only for my permanent residency visa. <laughs> That's my time today. Thank you very much, guys. One more time, Yumi Nagashima. Wow. So much fun. There are seven comics here from the Vancouver comedy community, and the next person that's coming up to entertain you is fairly new, and he won the lottery draw. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please give some love in the room for Mr. Tanner McCoolman. Yeah. Thank you, Scotty. Uh, some of you may have already met me. I was the guy who directed you to where the bathroom was. More of you may remember me as the guy who made awkward eye contact with you after you came back from the bathroom. So I like to change things up. I didn't tell everyone where it was. Signs did that for me. Oh, it's a, it's a packed house in here tonight. This is really nice. Uh, if you're not aware, we do have refreshments back there, including double bubble gum, if you still have your original teeth and don't want them anymore. A little bit about me, uh, my life's been going pretty good. I, I recently got a book deal for my uh, Get Rich Quick book. You can find it in the personal finance section of your uh, nearest Barnes & Noble or chapters coming up soon, hopefully. It's called uh, Chloroform Robberies from Rags to Riches. I do a lot of karaoke, I, uh, one fan, all right. <laughs> It's kind of how karaoke goes, isn't it? Um, I went to do some karaoke not too long ago, and uh, there was a sign on the door that said, no cover. I was there for like three hours, and not a single person did an original song. I just wanted to see how long you guys would keep going. <laughs> my, I, I don't like listening to my doctor's advice. He, uh, he's really big into fitness, and I'm not so much. He told me that I should probably start cutting some refined sugars from my diets and such. Suggested I start putting agave syrup in my coffee. I told him I'd get right on that. What I didn't tell him is that I also started counting tequila as agave syrup. Anything in a mug, I started counting his coffee.
Love to me is a lot like skateboarding. Because I've got no f***ing idea how to do it, and I think I'm getting a little too old to learn how. <laughs> I lead a really easy life. Like, I think the three worst things that have happened to me are hemorrhoids, kidney stones, and finding out that my father has the same safe word that I do. <laughs> if you don't find me funny, I, I hope I can at least send you home with some new information. Did you know that an ant can survive a fall of up to 17 stories? Yeah, my girlfriend's aunt, however, could not. <laughs> I heard one or two people oh with that joke. Guys, come on, it's just a joke. She's my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> I love gay guys. Don't you? They're the only people I trust to mansplain blowjobs. All right, I think I'm gonna leave you on this. <laughs> My name is Tanner. If you might not be able to tell, but I have uh, fairly red hair, or a lot of freckles. My parents thought it would be funny to name me something I would never possibly hope to become. <laughs> My full name is Tanner, taller and able to maintain an erection, McCoolman. All right, thank you very much, have a good night. You guys have been fantastic. Gentleman Tanner McCoolman. Yeah. Just won a lottery spot. No preparation. Unbelievable. That was great. Hey guys, thanks for watching. That's part one of three of our Rise of the Comics Live. I want to thank Yumi Nagashima, Tanner McCoolman. And on the next part, we're going to showcase Steve Letts, Jenny Taze, and Harris Anderson. So look forward to seeing that next time on Rise of the Comics.